Well, here we go again. We're trying to get this camper project finished up and the next step is going to be the floor. So we got the bathroom floor taken care of. Uh, the hole is fixed. The, the floor is nice and sturdy. So now in order to cover that up and to take care of the rest of the floor a little better, we're going to put down some laminate flooring. So you saw what the floor was made out of in the last video, that foam and then with the, the small plywood on top. The thing about that is, is when there's anywhere that's got a small kind of point load, like the bed uh, feet, for instance, I've heard that there's stories of that pushing through that plywood or damaging that plywood, making the floor soft there. So we want something a little bit more rigid than the basically linoleum that they put on these trailers to start with. So we're going to get all this cleaned up and put down some, some of the nice weatherproof or waterproof laminate floor. And it's going to start with getting all this stuff out of the way that's left over from the bathroom project. Now that I've swept 36 times, the floor is almost clean, but we got the, the mats that they had in here all rolled up and taken up. And the problem, one of the problems I'm dealing with is I think the previous owners or the, the people that we bought it from, they just painted this vinyl flooring or really linoleum. I don't know if you can hear my feet still sticking to it, but I don't think the floor or the paint ever really set up quite right and it's still a little tacky so all that dust that I had going in here and that foam and stuff from working on the bathroom floor is just sticking right to it so I got everything swept up that I could but <clears throat> I can't get it perfect um, we're gonna get started the we're gonna be laying this luxury vinyl plank um, I think it's the cheapest stuff that they've got at Lowe's or not Lowe's but Menards um, it's easy click and that's not the right end. Easy click, luxury vinyl flooring. Um, this is the pattern. We thought it would go pretty well with the existing cabinets and the walls. Um, it is the waterproof stuff, so you can see that it's gray here. It's the, the plastic. It's got the underlayment on it already. I think I'm going to start over here on this wall. Believe it or not, that is... The longest section of straight wall that I can find in this camper over here against the kitchen cabinets and stuff that looks straight but several of those cabinets duck in and out so that's really not a, a place where I can get started but I'm gonna get started over here in the corner probably what we'll do is we'll start from that wall and build out coming out this way and then at some point we'll be able to shoot straight into the bathroom and then have to lay back to the left backwards that way and I'll show you what I'm doing whenever I got to do that but <clears throat> um, there are a couple things I'm gonna have to do to level up the floor in the bathroom everything came out pretty good but I kind of goofed whenever I cut out this one spot here so I'm probably gonna have to level that up we'll see how it goes but uh, I guess we're gonna get started and see what we can get done we made some progress on the flooring here. I started over here on this wall where I thought I would. That's worked out pretty well. I was able to go all the way down this wall and then start building this way from there. Uh, there's a trim piece I was able to take off the front of the couch. So we're just going to stop there. That couch doesn't move. It's screwed to the floor and everything behind it. Uh, that's just storage space, so I'm not going to run flooring back there. Um, we're around the door, over to the dinette, and... We're getting ready. The reason I wanted to show this was we're getting ready to go into the bathroom. So uh, the reason that we have to do it this way is so I started laying floor over here and then <clears throat> we'll have to have flooring in the bathroom there. Well, as this flooring goes into the bathroom, there's no good way to lay that flooring ahead of time and come up and meet this flooring. There's just no way that you'd ever get it to work out. So what we're going to do, um, and what you have to do kind of with this, this type of snap together flooring, is I'm going to take 
three planks or three rows all the way through to the back of the bathroom. You can do it with just two. I've got the space to do three, so it'll do a little bit better. But all I'm trying to do is make sure I've got enough planks that I can shoot a straight line straight back. So I'm going to take that row, that row, and this row, and we're going to go all the way back. And then what I'll have to do is I'll have to lay the floor backwards going back this way to fill in the bathroom over there. That's about the only way that I know of that that can be done. So I'll show a couple steps. This flooring has been pretty easy to work with. Um, since it's the cheap stuff, it's pretty thin. So you got to be careful with some of the edges. Uh, otherwise, that makes it pretty easy to cut. So that part's been pretty easy. And I'll show you a couple pieces of this going down so you can see how it works. Okay, we're getting ready to go into the bathroom. I got a few more planks laid. Um, I was going to go ahead and show you how this process goes. I lucked out with that piece right there luckily it goes right by the door jam everything was nice and straight but uh, so the next piece that we're gonna lay will be this one right here so I'll see if I can do this uh, with one hand here so the very first thing is each piece has two different edges you'll notice the gray on those two edges that overlap and they've got kind of a geometry that snaps together with the other piece and then the gray on this side and this end so there's only one way that you can put them together so if if something doesn't go together then you know you've got it wrong and you can try something else but um, see if I can set you up here see if that'll make any sense so the very first thing is to take this piece and line up the edge and then tilt it up and make sure it's seated in there well and then I like to take and bring it as close to this joint as possible that should go and then you kind of want to push in and down at the same time and get that to lock in And you'll know when it's in good because it will it will go together nice and easy so we've got that there but we've still got this gap so this piece needs to move this way and they make a tool to do that with um, even those I'm not real sure about but uh, I'll show you how I do it I always cut a sacrificial piece of the flooring with the correct end so I can latch it into the end uh, that I need to drive on. So we'll take you up and show you that. So the end edges work the exact same. So I take this piece and lay that there for a spacer. And then I'll take this and just temporarily put it into the end. And the point of this piece is just that it gets this piece up off the floor far enough that I can hit it with a hammer and then I take another scrap piece so this is a lot easier with two people so that one person can be down there tapping on the on the piece and somebody else can be down here watching the joint to make sure it goes together usually the problem is is that this piece here is up too high so it doesn't want to go in so what I do is take another piece of flooring lay it upside down and put my knee on it so that's what I do with that and then let's see if I can get you situated here let's see what's going on so this piece should go together Lean over. check on that every once in a while if that's nice and flush then the piece went together okay so that's the basic process for putting in a, a full piece whenever there's something that needs trimmed it gets a little more difficult just because you don't have as much room to operate but it's really not too bad so there it is we'll keep going and see if we can get into the bathroom got the three rows all done headed into the bathroom 
was just getting ready to go and start laying flooring that way and my lovely fiance informed me that now we need to tear it all out <laughs> so we've had this dinette deal here and wasn't sure exactly what we were going to do with it we had talked about it some we talked about putting a, a bench or something along this wall and she says it was part of the conversation it probably was and i forgot about it but we've got this couch here and it's screwed down to the floor but obviously we can we can undo that <clears throat> and after measuring it so this this also folds down into a bed so after we measured it it will fit along this wall just right with a few inches to spare and then we've got plenty of room we can space it out away from the wall so that that can fold down and be a bed for somebody that's staying with us the the our bed just lays down over the top of that couch so it doesn't do anything for that bed so what we're going to do is we're going to take this out this dinette seat uh there's some plumbing and wiring and stuff there but i'm pretty sure that the couch will fit around it no problem we may have to shuffle some stuff around but i don't think it'll be a big deal the biggest thing besides tearing up all the floor and then running it the rest of the way under the couch and then running it the rest of the way where this dinette set is is we've got to go over the wheel well there uh, in the corner there and that couch and you see the back corner of it obviously doesn't have any kind of cut out to go out over it so I'm gonna have to cut the corner off of that couch um, we'll see what happens when we get into it I don't think it'll be too big a deal um, but it's gonna take a little bit of time so for now though we get to tear out all the work that I've done already so we'll see you when that's done all my floor is gone I think I can still use maybe these two strips except for that one piece in the corner there that's gonna have to go because I trimmed it around the sofa that was here so we got the dinette <clears throat> bench taken out uh, most of this is gonna be able to stay okay one thing I did do is that black outlet that's an outlet right there it was in the front of the dinette like right around here but there was just enough wire that I could go over there and uh, move that cut a hole in that wall and get it put in so that'll be nice we can charge phones or plug in a fan or whatever by this this couch once we get it there so I think that's all gonna work out okay and there's <laughs> our couch so we're temporarily storing it up like that so I can get some floor laid um, it looks like it's not going to be too bad to cut and fit around this wheel well. We'll get into that and I'll show you how that process goes. But for now, we're going to get back to laying floor. We're going to go all the way from those cabinets along over to this wall. Hopefully get built back out to where we were so we can go back in the bathroom again. Uh, and that's the last piece of trim so we've got the floor all finished that was the last piece of trim we were putting in everything came out pretty nice obviously I skipped around that the only place that I wasn't real wild about is the trim around the bottom of the doors that piece in particular that piece of flooring I cut that thing three times and it still didn't fit right so that's what I went with that was the the third different piece of flooring that I cut to try and fit there I don't understand why the people who made this RV couldn't make this cabinet straight all the way across it would have made my life a lot easier putting trim but everything came out okay we're uh, it all looks pretty good in the bathroom here I really like this trim we lucked out it's a pre stained trim from Menards and it matched the woodwork in here perfectly I mean it looks like it was originally part of it so next I'm gonna go through and finish filling the holes the nail holes in the trim that I just put on I'll show you how I do that and then we got to get started on that couch project the next step of the process is going to be turning my semi-professional trim job into a professional trim job and this is the magic tool here this is just brown painter's caulk and it's pretty common practice to fill the nail holes, which is pretty simple. 
go through and dab it on there. It really helps to have a, a damp paper towel to get your finger wet. And then wipe that off. The color's off a little bit, but as it dries, it'll darken up and it's hard to find a caulk that's perfect. About the only way to get it any better, I think, is to buy or make wood filler out of some sawdust and stain it. But this job isn't going to get this. What is going to help this trim job even more is stuff like this. So you see this corner, even though I cut it perfect, obviously something about the camper is not perfect. Uh, we'll go with that. So the gap at that corner isn't perfect. So we just kind of paint it up here a little bit. Let me get that off the floor. And try to smooth it out some. There we go. That will dry a little bit closer to the wood tone, and that corner will look a lot better. Luckily, that one's going to be under the couch anyway, so some of the other ones look a lot better. After I did that, I'll give you a shot of what the nail holes look like afterwards. You can see that piece of trim there. In that shot, there's at least three nails, four nails, that you can't hardly even see. So, it does a good job covering that up. I'm going to finish up, and then next we'll go onto the couch. And about 30 minutes later, after that caulk had a chance to dry that's what it looks like looking pretty good taking the couch apart now you can see the side of the couch those four screws we've got those off the top up here and the whole side of the couch comes off so now we've just got two bolts and just this little horseshoe leg section can come off and that will be what I need to modify to go over the wheel well so we're gonna get that off and get some measurements taken and see what we're going to wind up having to do. So I got the couch all taken apart. I got this hoop here that's going to be what we've got to modify. And I set it there in place before before I took it apart. I uh, set up the couch next to a wall. And I measured how exactly far this foot needs to be from this wall. So that the couch can lay out like it's supposed to. Um, so I did some measuring. And it looked like 29 would work, 30 would give a little bit of clearance, so I decided to go uh, with 30. And that still won't put uh, the couch too far out here, you can get to the bathroom whenever it's, it's folded out. So, I came over here, this is where the modifications are going to have to happen. And I put this hoop down on the ground, and did some measuring to see where we're going to wind up. Measure over that wall. Look at that. 30 and a half inches I am not cutting all that apart and making a bracket for half an inch so we're good to go just like it is that is so exciting to me I was not looking forward to cutting into all that it really wouldn't have been too big of a deal I was just going to run uh, probably lay a 2 by 4 flat cut this hoop off flush that way and then just have a 2 by 4 block of wood or something hit the bottom but now we don't have to do that the only thing that we've got to do is uh, this fabric is stapled to the bottom of this end, this end piece for the couch. So I'm going to take some measurements, see how big of a notch I need to cut out. We'll probably go around that uh, propane hose, that water hose, so it'll land somewhere in here about where the floor starts, and then come up and then just be tall enough to clear all that stuff where it goes over the top of the wheel well. But we'll take some measurements of that. And get that going, this project's going to go way faster than I thought it would. Doing our measuring here, it looks like we needed to take about 12 inches from the back of the couch so that it will come down and hit the floor somewhere in there. And then, as far as coming up, um, I'm just going to take it up 9.5 inches. That hits the bottom of that bar, and then that way, uh, whenever I put the the couch back together and put some bracing in there i can shoot some screws through this into that side and that will get me all of our bracing back i've got the couch end all peeled apart got the upholstery peeled back they were big fans of the the staples there 
I've got several of them in there, which I guess that's kind of how you do it. But it's a pretty simple frame. So right here is one of my cut lines. That's going to be the 12 inch. And then here is one of my cut lines. And then this is about three inches wide. This is the surface that the uh, that hoop used to screw to. So that thickness there is three inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this corner out cut those off there and then I'm going to rip down a two by four three inches wide and then basically just build a, a leg square that corner off with the two by that's three inches wide and then the reason I cut this distance this height if you can imagine it, it's upside down right now but if that two by runs along this way that will line up with the bar on that hoop and I can put screws through the hoop and run it into that two by and down and then we'll just cut the upholstery and fold it around and staple it back. But we'll get started on that and see how it turns out. Well, I got going there and I didn't get much video taken. But you can see what, what we ended up with. Pretty straightforward. You can see the two 2x4s. Two I ripped them down to 3 inches. Just cut out the corner and built it back in this way. Uh, screwed, the, screwed down through that. So you can see that's wider than this board but it matches up flush with these and that's where it's bolted on and then this should be in line with where that bracket is i can drill a hole there and shoot some screws into it this is the orientation it'll be in <clears throat> when it's installed so now i've got plenty of extra fabric there i'm just going to fold it over and i've got a staple gun we're going to uh, staple the edges just like it was and hopefully you'll never know the difference All right, I'd say that came out pretty good. And here's the finished modification. So you can see it lined up with the floor pretty well over here. And those two new screws go into that two by four that I put in. 
we got plenty of clearance. So the only thing that's left for this project is to put that back on the couch, set the couch in, and screw it down. And here's the finished product. We got a few inches of room over there. I pushed it all the way down, basically tied against this wall, more or less. And if I pull up on this, oh, if I can get my hand in there, we've got plenty of room for it to fold out into a bed. We've got plenty of an aisleway here. There's plenty of clearance. The only problem, the only thing I don't like is how big of a gap it leaves over here, but that's kind of what we had to do. And then it leaves plenty of room for a walkway here. Honestly, as far as like blocking the door, the bed does way more to do that whenever it's laying down <clears throat> than the couch ever thought about. So everything's looking pretty good. Floor is done. Trim is done. It's all looking good. I uh, still got the toilet to put in, but that won't be part of this video. Uh, if you like what you see, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.